If you're going to count quarters on your fingers, it would take you even longer to count than some of the other methods because quarters are worth 25 cents. So, so you're going to have to count 25 times on your fingers. It doesn't, it's not worth it. So, uh, let's, let's see if we can find any patterns though when we're counting by 25s. If we have one quarter, we have 25 cents. Add another quarter, you're going to get 50 cents. And then 75 cents and then 100 cents, which is a dollar. Now, looking at this, it, it's tough to find any patterns, but let's add more quarters. So here's one. Here's another one. It's like magic just, just pops up on the screen. Here's And here's four more. So what's the value of these? Well, we're going to have, continuing from this 100 over here, we're going to be getting 100 plus a quarter makes 125. And then 150, 175, and then 200. Here, that's a zero over here. here. Let me fix that up. Like that. Now we can probably see a pattern a little more clearer. Do you come up with anything? Can you can you find anything looking at this? Well, for one thing, if, if let me help you out a little bit here. Here's a 25. Here's a 25. Here's a 50. Here's also a 50. And then 75, 75, 0, 0. Zero, zero. Those numbers never change. If you're going to go continue this pattern, it would repeat all over again. So memorize this pattern. 25, 50, 75, zero, zero. Then what happens is this. Remember the up rule where you got to do the up arrow? You can do it here on the first set of zeros. Not this zero. This is, this is actually a 50. The last two digits here make a zero. So you put an up arrow on it. Likewise, you have a, an up arrow over here too. So on the first set of zeros, you write a 1. Makes sense, right? First set of zeros, 1. Second set of zeros, you put a 2. And if there's no arrows, you, you just hold on to the number. So here, this 1, when you go here, it stays 1, 1, 1, and then a 2 because of the arrow. So let's see how we can um, apply this. By the way, 200 cents, how many dollars is that? That's $2 because every 100 cents is a dollar. So... So yeah, anyways, let's continue on here, see what we can come up with. In the next four questions, we're going to be doing some examples. So how do you start any of these examples? This is what I recommend you do first. Start off that pattern on the bottom of the page. What pattern am I talking about? This one. 25, 50, 75, 0. Remember, these numbers never change. And once you write the zero, zero, you're going to write an up arrow every single time. So how do we start this one? Well, we have a 25 over here. So what comes after 25? Let's see. 50. And then 75. And then zero, zero with the up arrow. And then repeat it all over again, right? Because there's no more numbers here. So you start all over again here, 25. Now what do we do? Well, we have a 1 over here, so we hold on to the 1, 1, and then here you bump it up to a 2 because of the arrow, and then a 2 again. So we have these numbers listed out. In the next question, this is, this is actually a 0, so we have 250. So we start at the 50. What's after 50? 75. So you write 75 and then 0, 0. Don't forget these arrows. And then 25 and then 50. So now what? Well, the 2 here comes along, and then here it's got to increase because of the arrow, and then hold on to it, and then hold on to it. How about the next one, 875? Where do we start in this, in this pattern here? Well, we're starting at the 75, so after 75 is 0, 0, with an up arrow, and then start all over again, 25, because we got to go back to the beginning, 50, 75. So here, right off the gun, right off the bat, we got to take the 8 and turn it into a 9. And then hold on to the 9. Like that. Only change it at the arrows. How about this one? 900. Well, we start at the 0, but there's no more numbers here. So you got to start all over again. So you put 25, 50, 75, 0, 0, and then again, you repeat it again. I put an extra square here. So what do you do here? 
900 or 925 hold on to the 9 hold the 9 hold the 9 and here I should have put these zeros here becomes a 10 and then the 10 stays now the curriculum says you only got to go up to this number here can you can you read this number that's right it says 1000 and the curriculum says you just got to stop at a thousand but hey we don't we don't have to listen to them we could do it our own way so we're gonna go past the thousand into 1025 and again we're gonna be doing a lesson on how to read numbers later on so if that didn't make any sense then then just just forget about that in this next question we're gonna be doing something a little bit more advanced now some of you here might be a little confused watching this the first time and um, in that case just just watch it a few times and and you will get it this does take a little bit more practice because we're counting backwards and and most people aren't used to counting backwards at, at first so let's take a look at how to how to do this sort of question here the same pattern remains so we have these numbers we're gonna write them down for for reference and then what do you do is is you look at the 75 and and you find it on here and then instead of going forward like we did in the other questions we're gonna go backwards so let's let's put all these numbers in the list 50 and then 25 and then you gotta start all over again on this side 0 and um, then after 0 we got 75 now there's gonna be an element of common sense when you're doing these here because you can't really do the up arrow method when you're going backwards backwards is is like something completely di well a little bit different so so let's see how we can use common sense in this so from 675 this is gonna stay a 6 like that the question is what's that number over here what are we gonna write here let's say we wrote a 6 that would make no sense because we already have that number over here so it can't, and, and by the way, also, if you wrote a 675 here and you're going to check your answer by counting forward again, you would have to put that up arrow over here and then realize, well, from a 6 to a 6, we didn't do anything. So this would be wrong. So what you do is you erase the 6 and you make it into, into what? What do you think? Oh, man, if you put a 5, good job. It has to be a 5 because now when we check our answer from a 5, we get up to the up arrow and then we gotta boost it to a six and it works let's use common sense in this one for counting counting backwards so first things first let's write down all the numbers in the pattern so we have 50 here and we have 50 there so again let's go this way this time we're going to the left so next is 25 so we have 25 and then we have to start over again at zero and then go 75 and then 50 and then 25 and see if you can do this ahead of me here you can you can kinda of move ahead of, of me here and then 0 75 50 25 so that's part one let's see what happens in part two so we have 450 over here like that and here let me make it let me make it darker so what's before 450 is 425 and then 400 now here's the up arrow right this is what we're gonna use to check our answer so again if we put a 4 over here also it would make no sense because when we count forwards again we have to use that up arrow and look 4 to a 4 what changed nothing so we did it wrong so this has to be a 3 so from 375, then you do the up arrow trick, and then you get up to 4 again. So, so it works when you do it this way. Now continue going backwards. 350, 320. We don't have to worry about these areas. Nothing, nothing happens here. And then 300. And then again, this has to be not a 3 because, again, when you check your answer by counting forward and you get to that up arrow, that 3 stays a 3. So it's wrong. It has to increase. So it must have been what? A 2. Right? We're going backwards here. So reverse the numbers. And then 2 here and then 2 there. I know, guys, this could be a little bit tricky. It does take a little bit of common sense and a lot of practice. In the last example here, we're going to be combining three of the patterns we've learned, the 25, the quarters, 
the nickels, which are the fives, and also the dimes, which are counting by tens. And we're going to put your memory to the test. So if you want to review right now, it'd be a good idea to go back to those other lessons and, and kind of uh, refresh your memory a little bit. But here's what I want you to do. Here's the question. Here's the, the problem we have. We have three people. One, two, three. Each person has a different amount of money. And we want to find out who has the most money. So person A has nine quarters, person B has 12 nickels, and person three or person C has eight dimes. In a moment, I want you to stop the video and figure out the value of each of these people's money. Okay, here you go. Begin. Stop the video now. Okay, we're back. So for nine quarters, this is what you should have done. You should have made one line for every quarter. So three, six, nine. For 12 nickels, you should have made 12 lines, one for each nickel. It's always important to organize your, your information. So that's step one. And then eight dimes mean, means you're going to be putting eight lines like that. Now let's move on to the second part of the question, which is calculating how much money we have. So nine quarters means we're going to be starting by counting but with 25. So we're going to write the pattern down. 25, 50, 75, 0. Start it over again. 25, 50, 75, 0, and then 25. And above the zeros, I'm going to remember, because, because I'm, I'm so good at this now, right? You're going to write arrows above each of them. Now let's figure out what the numbers are. So 25, 50, 75, 100. Yeah, let's change colors here a bit. Here's 100. Hold the 1, hold the 1, hold the 1, bump it up. Hold the 2, like that. So this person has 225 cents. Person B, nickels. How much are nickels worth? Nickels are worth 5 cents. And what's the pattern when you're counting by 5s? Well, it's just writing five zero five zero all over again. Five zero five zero. Here's five zero. Like that. Now, what do we do above the zeros? We write arrows. That means we're going to increase the number once we get to that zero. Now, the second part. So here's a five. This must mean a one. Hold the one. Arrow means make it a two. Hold the two. Arrow, three, four, five, six. So this person has 60 cents. And the last person, the dimes. Now let's refresh our memory on how to count by dimes or by tens. Well, a dime is worth 10 cents, so we'll put a 10 here. And the pattern for counting by tens is the, the number here, whatever it is, never changes. So we'll write a zero on all of them. We know that it's, it's never going to change. What does change, though, however, is the number beside it. In this case, it's a 1. So what happens to the 1? It becomes a 2, and then a 3, and then a 4, and just changes every single time. That's what you do for 10s. So this person has 80 cents. So who's the winner? This guy here. Thanks for joining me in Counting by 25s. It's a great way to count. It's one of my favorites. And with enough practice, you'll be able to count any amount of quarters. See you next lesson.